Hey guys, welcome to Retro Crisis, and in today's video I'll be looking at this. This is the Tang Retro Console from Cyped. From my understanding, this is an FPGA-based system, which has been designed for retro gaming in mind. So the system comes preloaded with a number of cores. Each core is designed to play a particular retro gaming system. So out of the box, you can play NES games, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, and Sega Master System games. And I've been told more systems are on the way. Now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with FPGA projects such as the Mr. Project and devices like the Analog Pocket, both of which are incredibly popular amongst retro gamers. However, the main selling point of the retro console is this is meant to be a cheaper, more affordable alternative to those. So this particular device that I've got here, including delivery from China, costs less than £100. I just want to make clear, I didn't actually pay for this device. This was sent to me by Cyped, the company that produces this, and I just want to make clear that they've not told me what I can and can't say. So I'll do my best to be as honest and transparent as possible. When you do purchase one of these, it does come in this pretty cool presentable carry case, and if you open it up, you can just slide the retro console straight in just like that. Pretty cool. And there's a nice little pocket at the top here where you can store your USB-C cable that comes with it, and also the SD card reader that comes in the package too. Included in the package were these two cables, and I presume they're more for developers, but I'll just be putting these to the side because I probably won't be using these. And another thing included in the package is this little gizmo. Now to some of you, these connectors may look very familiar, and that's because they're the same connectors used for PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 control pads. And what you can do is you can actually plug these little pins right into the side of the retro console, and it's these pins right here. So I'll show you how it works. You just plug the board straight into there, and there we have it. You can plug your controllers directly into this, player one and player two, and then you're good to go. Alternatively, if you just tilt the console forward, you'll notice two USB connectors, and you can also plug in USB controllers. The package I got actually comes with two of these Super Nintendo style controllers. But anyway, for this video, I'll be removing this connector and I'm just gonna put it back into its package. Now, before I load this up, what I'm going to do is check to see what's actually on this SD card. Great, so when you put the SD card in, you'll be presented with this folder here. So the first folder is the cores folder. So if we open that up, as I'm using the 60K version of the board, this folder will be relevant to me. So if I open that up and here we have all the cores. So we've got GBA Tang, which is the Game Boy Advanced core or emulator. We have MD Tang, which is Mega Drive Tang, NES Tang for the Nintendo Entertainment System, SMS Tang, which is for the Sega Master System, and SNES Tang, which is for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System or Super Famicom. Let's go back. So I don't have the 138K version, but I presume it's a similar structure in there too. So let's go back. Now, if you want to add games to the system, what you need to do is dump your games into the relevant folders here. So we have Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive Genesis, NES Famicom, Sega Master System or Mark III, and the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom here. So let's open one for example, let's open GBA, and then in the ROMs folder, you would just copy and paste your games here. So it looks like it accepts the .gba file format. So let's go back. Now here it appears we have the Game Boy Advance BIOS file. And here we have something that says, please place GBS underscore BIOS. I'm guessing they mean GBA underscore BIOS dot bin in this directory for a better gaming experience. So what I'm going to do is, I'm assuming these are kind of like just placeholder files. What I'm going to do is delete these. And then I'm going to source the GBA BIOS file and copy it here. If you do a quick Google search, you'll find the file and then you can just download it and put it here. Great, let's go back. Let's check the Genesis folder. So with this folder, it appears you can dump your games directly into this folder here. Let's go back. Looks like it's the same thing with the NES folder. Same thing with the Sega Master System folder. Same situation with the Super Nintendo folder. Let's go back. Now, at this stage, what you want to do is just copy whichever games you want into these folders and then safely eject your SD card. Great, so once you've safely ejected your SD card, what you can do is plug it back into the USB-C SD card reader thing, like so, and then you get the retro console. You'll notice a USB-C thing there, and you just plug that in. 
make sure it's in nice and tight. And then what you'll do is you'll plug in your HDMI to your TV or monitor. And now you're wondering where does the power go? What you want to do is plug your power into the little side thing on the USB stick. And what that does is pass power through the USB into the console. And one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of those Super Nintendo controllers that came with, and I'm going to plug that into this USB here on the left. So only thing now to do is plug in the HDMI, and hopefully the system should switch on. Great, so as soon as I switched the power on, it took about five to 10 seconds for this thing to load up, which is pretty impressive to be honest. And here you'll see something that roughly mimics the folder structure from the SD card. Now, I did go to options earlier on and I did try to open it, but it, you know, it doesn't do anything. So every time you go to options, it just takes you back to NES. And if you go to cores, it just shows you the folder structure we saw earlier. Right, so let's try a few games. So let's go to NES and I've got Kirby's Adventure here. Let's load it up. And in all honesty, it's kind of working as expected. So if I just fly around, yeah. Looking good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's exit the game and we can do that by keeping hold of select and right on the d-pad and then let's go to the two dots to go back. Now let's try a Super Nintendo game. I've got Super Mario World here. Great. Let's try this level here. Oh, that wasn't meant to happen. But anyway, the game loads. Let's get out of this one before I make a fool out of myself even further. Great, so let's go to Game Boy Advance. Ooh, make sure you don't click on GBA BIOS, go to ROMs folder, and let's try Super Mario Advance 2. And there we go, the game has loaded and it's doing its animation thing. Great, let's skip this, let's get out of this one. Great, so now let's go to Sega Mega Drive and let's try Sonic the Hedgehog, another game that everyone should be familiar with. And finally, let's try Sega Master System, and let's try the 8-bit version of Sonic the Hedgehog. And I can't imagine this would take too long to load. Oh, bingo. Even better. Let's try a little bit of the first level. This one's smooth. Great, so as you can see, games for the NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, and Sega Mars System all ran fine. Now, all the games I showed you were kind of like very popular games, you know, games that were released fairly early on in their system's life cycles. Now, there are some games I tested for each of these systems that did not work. I tested these earlier on, off camera, and I didn't see the point of kind of going through that process again with you guys, but I want to be transparent with you. I want to be clear with you and honest with you which games didn't work. So with the NES, I didn't have any issues with any games. Everything, everything that I threw at it worked fine. With the Super Nintendo, I did have issues. I loaded up two games that are very heavy. So there's Chrono Trigger, which is one, which actually worked fine. There were no issues with it. But then I also tried Street Fighter Alpha 2, which is heavily compressed, very data heavy, very technically heavy. That did not even load. The SNES Tang core did not even, just didn't even try. I'm guessing uh, the core main not be advanced enough yet. I'm not sure. Next, with the Game Boy Advance, I tried loading up Pokemon Fire Red. Again, took a while to load it up. It's a very, very large game. Didn't work. And with the Sega Mega Drive, I tried Super Street Fighter 2, which is a very large Sega Mega Drive game. Didn't work. And I also tried Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the lock-on cartridge ROM, and that also didn't work for me. With the Sega Mars system, everything worked fine. Didn't have any issues. Now, just keep in mind, the Tang Retro Console project is very early on in its development. It's still in its infancy. There's loads of updates that are happening. It's very exciting. So I have full confidence that the cores will be ironed out and those complicated, heavy games will begin to work at some point in the future. Personally, I'm very excited to see which direction this project goes. For me, personally, I've never been a big FPGA guy. I don't own a Mister or an Analog Pocket or anything similar. So this is my kind of first foray into the FG, FG, FPGA space. For my gaming preferences, I don't really care about 3D systems. So if those don't come to this, I don't care. But what I would like to see 
are more 2D systems. So I'd love to see the original Game Boy and maybe some classic arcade games make an appearance. Anyway, if you are interested in purchasing one of these, I'll leave a link to it in the description. I just want to make clear I don't get a profit from this. The company didn't pay me. These are just my honest thoughts. I didn't want to hide anything from you guys. So I hope you found this video useful. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.